Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to uh, Wednesday. This is the Earth Master, somewhat under the weather, but uh, we're all good. We'll get through this. Uh, about 10, 12 a.m. here, California time. Valentine's Day, right? Happy Valentine's Day to all the lovers out there. All right, earthquake activity. Well, we've seen a little bit of movement kicking up here last night into California right after I went to bed. And uh, if you watched my update video last night, you'll see that I mentioned a watch for migration of earthquake activity down here across the Imperial Fault to the Brawley Seismic Zone, which is an extensional plate boundary here of the San Andreas Fault. And sure enough, that happened last night. Uh, we did see a four-pointer in this area. Looks like right after the time I uploaded my video and went to bed. Uh, a, a little bit more swarming in that area following that four-pointer. Um, see what we got here overnight. Looks like um, <clears throat> a couple ones and twos there in the mix. But again, that four-pointer kind of shaking things up there off the Brawley Seismic Zone. Now, remember this area has definitely seen some increasing movement here. Let's take a look at the last seven days of 2.5 and above for this area. Of course, 4.8 down south here. Uh, that had, had a, a decent amount of swarming with it. And then that migration going on here last night with the most recent uh, uh, four-pointer in this area just, you know, just kind of comes to the uh, conclusion here that uh, things could could be looking at a, potentially a larger quake out here with this migrational earthquake activity. Overall, you know, the pressure out here across the west coast has been elevated uh, roughly about northern California southward here over the last few weeks you know we've seen uh, definitely some elevated movement out here across california so keep an eye on the southern branch here of the san andreas fault it's uh, you know one that i think most people are concerned about uh, it does have the potential to produce an 8.1 earthquake the southern branch does so uh, we'll keep an eye on that uh, again migrational activity there this morning uh, if it starts getting closer, obviously much a little bit closer up here or further swarming around the region, then uh, we'll definitely have to uh, keep our eyes open. Either way, good to be prepared. Let's see what else we got going on here. We did see some larger scale movement uh, earlier this morning. Looks like about, uh, when did this come in? About 3 o'clock this morning here. Seen a... Um, 6.0 out here across this little subduction zone here looks like the uh the yap trench right here um in the uh kind of close to the uh, micronesia area it looks like uh, a little aftershock activity following that uh, six pointer this morning uh, let's see here. We did have some uh, deeper movement up north here a couple days ago. Actually, this is from yet oh, two days ago, 6.1. So uh, things are, you know, they're definitely interesting right now because I'm, I'm not really convinced that uh, we're done with the larger quake activity. I think something's building out here across the western areas of the Pacific Plate with California being so elevated right now. Uh, one or the two is going to happen a much larger quake above a six pointer obviously across this area or we're going to see some further larger scale movement out here in california so it's leaving the earthquake watch up here for now uh, due to the uh, migrational swarming activity a little bit closer up the plate boundary and as you can see here uh, last 24 hours still showing some elevated movement out here uh, aside from the activity down south here uh, quite a few red circles on the map around the uh, uh, the Long Valley Super Volcano up here. Nothing big going on, but uh, it does show uh, this map does show some increasing activity here in the last few hours. All right, uh, further out and about here looks like uh, some movement outside of Mount St. Helens up here north. A couple smaller earthquakes right up the summit region as well. Not really seeing any swarming area uh, or swarming activity like we've seen last year. Uh, Mount St. Helens did see quite a bit of swarming in this area um, of the summit region, but down there into the uh, magma chamber area, uh, really nothing has changed though. Uh, following that uh, swarming activity, uh, as far as volcanic activity goes, but we're still seeing some earthquake movements here uh, across the area on occasion. 
Uh, Yellowstone National Park and Montana region. Looks like some activity stirring up out here today and uh, from yesterday as well. Let me double check the Yellowstone maps here, see what we got. Looks like, um, well, a little bit of activity there showing up uh, across the area, I believe. Let's see, where's our six pointer going to be? Yeah, it's not that one. I think it may be this one right here, as far as that long distance. Six pointer, well across the Pacific. Sometimes these earthquakes show up there uh, across seismograph stations around the world. But uh, anyway, far as local activity goes, it looks fairly quiet there across the Yellowstone area um, for now. Some movement out in the Oklahoma area from last night and even right now. Looks like a little 2.7 near the Red Rock area. Uh, north of Perry. I believe there's quite a few oil fields out here as well. Um, let's see. I'm really not seeing anything listed on the map, but uh, um, not even really seeing anything here. Well, it's hard to tell if these are not uh, maybe some livestock ponds out there. Uh, those kind of look like they are livestock ponds, you know, cow cattle and whatnot having access to water. But uh, you know, keep an eye on that. Either way, Oklahoma has been seeing uh, quite a bit of activity here recently. All right, anything else going on around the world? Uh, newer quake here across the Japan area, 100 kilometers deep into the Japan Trench. Like I say, I think we're looking at maybe something bigger brewing out here. The way this is behaving with the, uh, the steadiness of the activity out here across the West Coast, Eastern uh, Pacific Plate Boundary. Uh, and then these deeper movement quakes out here across the uh, the Western Pacific here, just kind of pointing towards something bigger happen on one of uh, one of these sides. Um, just question is which one? It's kind of a toss up there between the two. All right, Hawaii still seeing activity stretching out here off Pahala uh, down towards the Loihi Seamount. Let's see what we got here for the latest update. From the USGS, with regards to Kilauea Volcano, which is uh, looks like it's still sitting out of yellow and advisory. Really uh, no change, it looks like, but we're going to check some, uh, some seismograph stations here and see what's going on if they're up and running. Looks like earthquake activity has somewhat uh, backed off uh, since last night. Past 12 hours, goodness, I don't know why. Sometimes... Sometimes this map here is just weird. I'm not for sure why it's doing that. Ever since they upgraded their uh, their charts here, I uh, have some issues with uh, clicking on the actual image here. There we go. That one works. Uh, either way, what do we got here? 18.15 UTC time on the 14th. That looks like that is the correct time. 18.14. Uh, just about right there. Yep. So earthquake activity, it looks like it has increased here in the last few hours. Um, I'm not 100% certain, though, that they're uh, adding all those quakes on here. Let me see what we got. A couple twos here over the last few hours, but it kind of looks like there's a little bit more uh, on those seismograph stations there. That's uh, Yellowstone. Too many windows open here. There we go. Kilauea Volcano. Uh, but either way, it does look active uh, in the last few hours. And far as the tilt meters out here, see if anything's going on with these UWE. We're starting to go up a little bit here, but that's not even uh, that much of a uh, inflation event. So uh, just still kind of waiting, kind of watching, seeing how things play out here with the uh, displacement of magma here recently across the area. As far as their latest update, looks like that was put out from yesterday, so uh, no new update as of yet. All right, uh, what else we got out here, folks, on the bigger the bigger scene here? Where's that six-pointer out here? Uh, let's see, a newer quake here. It looks like coming in 4.5. That's from 8 o'clock this morning, so that's EMSC reporting that. Look over here to the USGS. Uh, really backed off down here across New Zealand. Not a whole lot of activity down here today. Looks like they did have a 3.2 southern end of the Kermadec Trench, fairly deep in that area. 
There's that six pointer from um, uh, last night, the Chile earthquake down there. A couple sixes here in the last 24 hours. Someone asked me, uh, what you know, how I feel about the amount of earthquakes this year compared to last year. Well, I went ahead and pulled up uh, the activity here from. Uh, this is from basically the first of the year. Well, I'll add it on the 31st here because technically that was the first of the year. That's, you know, it's just right there. <laughs> a 7.5 kind of stirred things off here uh, to start off 2024. Uh, so we got about 752 earthquakes of 4.5 and above. These are some of the magnitudes here. Pretty decent, right? 7.5, 7.0. Well, I went ahead and pulled up the same time frame from last year, and we are way above that level uh, in terms of the multitude of quakes and also the magnitudes here. So last year, uh, the first part of last year was much more active compared to this year in terms of the multitude and also the magnitudes here. So uh, not at that level yet. Um, got about maybe almost 300... Uh, Earthquake differences, again, that's between 4.5 and uh, higher. Uh, but uh, we'll see what we'll see what this year wants to bring in. Could be the year of the big quake. You just never know when they're going to hit. But either way, just be prepared out here, folks. Uh, still leaving the earthquake watch up. Just too much activity here. <clears throat> Leaning towards um, the San Andreas Fault here with that migration. All right, let's check out space weather activity here and see what we got. Got a little bit of rain coming in right now, Northern California. Check out the weather here in just a second. Proton event is continuing. It's been about a week now of continuous proton events here, which is a little odd. Um, really don't recall it lasting this long or, or this, uh, this strong. I mean, it's a little on the crazy side here. We did see some flaring activity, and of course... Uh, the charged protons stream here towards the Earth at light speed, uh, reaching the uh, planet in about seven minutes from the sun. Uh, and so these proton events occur following these large flare events, but uh, it's been a, been a couple days now since we've seen any large flare activity. So I'm uh, not for sure why this is still lingering, but uh, it's a little odd here. back out and check out the um, flaring activity like I mentioned it's starting to calm down here C 1.8 is the current flare level and uh, doesn't look like we're seeing too much uh, potential here at least on these sunspots let me see what we got uh, saying goodbye to this regional sunspot that is departing off the uh, southwest limb and really a couple of these sunspots that were growing are now separating here on Valentine's Day, they don't want anything to do with each other, it looks like. Uh, so these are going to be relatively stable and uh, disappear. Further off onto the eastern limb here, well, we've got a couple disorganized sunspot regions, but uh, overall threat looks like it is diminishing. 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 55, X flare around 15% chance or so. There's that proton event that's still remaining elevated here, folks. Um, far as any auroras that was a complete dud here a couple days ago they were forecasting a g2 class storm well that uh was wasn't really too much of a, a shocker that we uh completely missed it i think we've seen the kp index up around a four or so but very minimal in terms of the aurora and uh, compared to the forecast that was supposed to happen all right look at the weather here real quick we'll check out um severe weather doesn't look like there's much we got a chance for some thunderstorms out here where i'm at uh, in Northern California, but uh, really not a whole lot of severe weather going on uh, for now. It looks like the Tropical Tidbit Station may be down. Yes, they are. Unfortunately, I do like to use this uh, site in terms of monitoring the forecast models. So we will switch over here to the uh, Windy map. What do I do with Windy? Where is it? up here that is online 
Uh, there's our low pressure system here kind of developing. Not going to be a huge rainmaker. Uh, we're just expecting some generally uh, light rain here today. But over the next 10 days, well, yeah, we got a series of storm systems here set to impact the uh, Northern California area. Uh, and we're looking at some impressive rainfall totals once again, just outside of Chico here where I'm at, maybe five inches of rain after it's all said and done. A little bit less here in this rain shadow, but I'm not 100% certain this is gonna be a rain shadow because uh, moist, most of the moisture here is kind of funneling up from the south area, southwest. So uh, that rain shadow occurs when we get the west to east movement, uh, but this may fill in. Uh, Southern California definitely getting some rain as well, uh, a few inches down there across the board. This is the ECMWF model, the GFS model here. Shows roughly about the same day, although that rain shadow filling in there in the Sacramento Valley, six inches of rain almost here over the next 10 days. That's a little bit more aggressive. Either way, it looks like we're going to be wet. Um, again, like I say, we got a couple of sprinkles coming in right now, but nothing big. Uh, should pick up maybe a quarter of an inch today. Then it gets a little bit heavier as we head through the week and into the weekend. Uh, so stay on uh, stay on guard, folks. We'll continue to watch this out here. Like I say, it's when you see the migration here of this earthquake activity in relation to the plate boundary, it's all kind of stressing the area right now and moving up towards uh, this region here. Uh, it all started off with a pretty decent swarm down here in the Gulf. Uh, since then, things have been elevated up along the plate boundary, and they're slowly migrating up uh, towards the plate boundary here itself, the San Andreas Fault. So we'll continue to watch that, folks. Uh, compared to last year, uh, you know, just in California terms, there's definitely more activity stirring up here so far for California. The worldview, not so much. Uh, you know, we're short of 300, 300 uh, earthquakes or so compared to last year, but definitely elevated out here across the west coast for now and that's when we need to be on guard uh, considering all the activity here very close in proximity to the san andreas fault okay and that's literally if you really if you look at the map here we're looking at maybe about 10 miles or so um some folks there think that a three mile three to five mile area around this region could trigger uh some potential larger activity uh, but I, I would say just anything in general out here, it needs to be watched. Uh, you're messing with a sleeping giant out here. That thing's very capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes and will put a huge dent uh, in California right now in terms of, well, everything. So we don't want that to happen, but we do need to be on guard, keep an eye on things out here, and uh, just be prepared uh, for some potential larger movement. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening, folks. Take care. Stay safe. I'm going to go down some vitamin C and uh, see if I can't kick this thing. Take care, folks.